I said, no, no freaking way. And I didn't say freaking way. So do your own due diligence, but we're not licensed real estate agents. Good morning. It's just purely our experience. Don't go out and make legal decisions based on what we say. Good morning. Hello. This is Randall and this is Flora. And I'm Flora. We're eating breakfast this morning in our house in the Philippines. So you may have watched my channel before, but I thought it might be interesting just to do a video where we're just eating breakfast and talking about some things of the day and just kind of invite you into our house here in the Philippines and Welcome spend a little time with us. Welcome to our house. What's that? Welcome to our home. Let's speak up. Anyway, so this morning I made breakfast, which is pretty common. If, if I asked Flora, she would make breakfast for sure. But I kind of get up, that's kind of what I want to do. I make my coffee and I've already had that this morning. It's probably six o'clock, what time is it now? Oh, it's 9.30. We've been talking about stuff. We've been doing some business dealings uh, on the phone and stuff like that. So I don't know if we really want to talk. We're not going to talk too deeply about it, but I thought I get probably the most questions I get on the channel is, is about our uh, Guimaras land and the purchasing and how do I purchase it? And do you know a real estate agent? And, you know, can you own the property and all that kind of stuff? But I'm gonna eat breakfast, so that's there's what this is about. It. That's what? There's a lot to it. Yeah, there, there's quite a bit, but <laughs> I've got two eggs that I fry and just kind of see two eggs. I put it on top of my red rice. I bought some red rice. I like that. It's it's supposed to be more nutritious. I don't know if it is, but I think so. And then a couple eggs, some fried pork belly uh, in the air fryer. You might be able to hear it in the background a little bit humming. And man, we love that thing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a it's a lifesaver. What do you like about it? Splatter. It don't splatter. <laughs> Which equals less <laughs> cleanup, right? Yeah. A lot less cleanup. Yeah. I was trying to do it on the stove top and. You have to clean the whole top of the stove or here in the Philippines, you'll have uh, unwanted guests come in and they call them ants or lung gum. Well, and also the smell, it's all over your house if you don't have the exhaust. So anyway, about buying property in Guimaras, I've had one cup of coffee. This is tea actually, it's still pretty hot. It's uh, English breakfast tea. So yeah, buying property in Guimaras, it's at the very least, it's an adventure. Well, the thing is, okay, um, one thing you have to, I guess, they call it due diligence, right? You have yeah, to check. Yeah, for sure. Once uh, somebody offers you the property or they gave you the copy of the title, if you have time to check it on the, I guess, a land bank or whatever, like like us, what we bought is a CLOA title. So for all of you who doesn't know what's a CLOA title, it is land that the government let the farmers use. I guess I could, I don't know if I could explain it um, clear, but it's owned by the government, but they let the farmers um, farm it, it or occupy it, farm it. Yeah, occupy it, plant whatever crops um, they wanted. It could be rice, it could be corn or whatever, veggies what or whatever mangoes? it is. What about mangoes? Yeah, or mangoes or anything. In Guimaras, you know. Yeah. Mangoes. Um, and then later on, after 10 years, I think uh, the farmers will, is, um, they are paying something to the land bank. I don't know if if I am right about it. Every year. And we'll just stop right there because I'm thinking about it, I may put a disclaimer. We're telling you our experience. Yeah. It's just purely our experience. Don't go out and make legal decisions based on what we say, because yeah, we know a lot more than we did, but still, we're still trying to figure things out. So this stuff, do your own due diligence. If you have a question, you can ask us, but we're not licensed real estate agents. I don't think we've even met over one, have we, since we've been here all the property we've looked at. Well, that's yeah, what? his claiming that he is, but 
Well, well and, and what we have found, and again, it's our limited experience, but if you, sounds bad, but if you deal with a real estate agent, your property is pretty much going to be a lot higher, right? That's, that's our experience. Now, it may not be true. Probably isn't true, but that's been our experience so far. Yes. So continue about the... The Clover. So the Clover title... C-L-O-A. What's yeah. that stand for, do you know? Well, you could put it on the description yeah, we'll, below, whatever. We'll put it up. They have to farm the land for a, for 10 years. Then after 10 years, well, I guess this land, well, this land was uh, turned over to the farmer. Year, well, I guess the, the title, it says December 24 of 2011, when they um, gave it to the farmer, or what do you call that? turnover yeah transfer yeah they turn it over to the the farmer in 2011 so now the next step was that they had to pay the land bank of the philippines so they could get the title of the land in their name in take, their name and with, take the take the government of the philippines off the title so yeah. it'd be their property so then they could sell it. So that, that's what happened to um, our land or the land that we purchased. It was under CLO title and paid in the bank, but we're not going through all the other details aside from that. But anyways, so, so do your due diligence, make sure that the title is clear of, and free of any liens that there's no first buyer, second buyer, third buyer, whatever it is. Here's what we learned. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more. I'm not gonna mention any names. Uh, and we're not mad at anybody, okay? This is not a complaint about any, anybody in the transaction that went on. But again, we're not experts. We're just telling you our experience, okay? And our experience is not unique in the Philippines. It's, it's just not. When you have a government-owned property and then it's uh, gave out to individuals and then they get it, <clears throat> and there's certain things that have to be paid off, like she said. When we looked at the land and then we wanted it, we paid what we felt like was top dollar for it. And according to all the properties that we looked at, we paid a good and fair price, right? Mm -hmm. So we go to a lawyer's office and I want to do everything legal. And you should. Uh, and I didn't want any mishaps. So we all three sat down, me and Flora, and the, the, the oldest uh, sibling that was left because the father had passed away. So this was the story that we were told. This is what we went into the lawyer's office. This is what we agreed to. Uh, the contract was drawn up that we'd pay, we would pay half of the purchase price. And then when the title comes down in our name, pretty standard then we'll pay the rest. That's the contract. So, you know, I had a concern. In the U.S., you're gonna put 20% down, right? And then it's gonna be held in escrow and nobody can touch that money until all the title search is done, all the, all the uh, check the title to make sure it's clear. We have in the U.S., we call that title insurance company and they do the title research. Well. I was assured that everything's going to be okay. And I asked the seller, I'm going to put that in quotes. I'm going to ask the seller, I asked the seller, are you sure there's no back taxes, there's no liens, there's no anything on the title that is going to have to be taken care of? Oh, no, 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 sir, there's not. And we were assured so many times, and even, even the lawyer that was there, said, look, you have nothing to worry about. And I was like, man, half. We put down half the money. I was like, that's too much. And I just had a bad feeling. And, and I really was a little bit, I was very stern at, at this closing of, of the property because I felt like we were putting down too much. And I said, what guarantee do we have that they're just not going to take this money? We don't have a title. We don't have anything. And, they, and the lawyer kept saying, you have a contract, you have a contract, that's your security. I'm like, oh, I don't feel good about this. So I expressed that. And of course they're speaking in uh, the dialect here. And I, even if it was Tagalog, I wouldn't understand it perfectly, but there was a lot of talk going on and, and, 
and I felt a little uneasy. But I thought, okay, we put down the half. If they want the other half, they're going to do the work, right? They're going to get the title clear. That's, I thought, okay, I don't want to do it. But if they want the other half, then they are motivated, and that's our leverage. So I went ahead and did it. So I don't know. We, we did that in June, and then it's like we went back to the United States. I mean, two days after we signed the contract, we went back to the United States and paid the, we paid the money. I guess we rushed. <laughs> well, we were kind of in a rush. They wanted to sell it. We were afraid it was going to be gone when we come yeah. back. So we paid half. And and again, this is just our experience, but it's not an uncommon one here in the Philippines. So people ask me, should I buy property? I'm telling you what you couldn't get into. I'm just being honest with you. I'm just telling you our experience. So about October, we're still in the U.S. And, and I come into the bedroom and my wife says, oh, so-and-so called, and that's uh, the owner of the property. That, oh, the seller. Uh, let's call him the seller because there's more details later. Mm -hmm. But the seller said, oh, uh, there is a lien on the property and, and after me to pay it, can you go ahead and pay me, you know, what, what, what was it, like a million pesos? Yeah, 1.4. <clears throat> One point, can you go ahead and pay me that? And I'm like, and just lay it out there. I'm not, this is just what happened. She was like, and I think she talked to somebody else in the lawyer's office and yeah it, it'd be okay because your title's going to be okay and i kind of i said no no way and i didn't say freaking way <laughs> so anyway you could edit that anyway yeah, yeah so anyway i didn't want to do so it so there's no way oh you, yeah you didn't agree to that yeah i didn't agree to that i wanted to do the contract that's what we say we're going to do the contract so she she didn't talk to anybody yet so she said, well, maybe, and believe me, she's no pushover. You know, it's just, sometimes people come to you with some pretty dang good stories and they have emergencies and they have reasons and they, they have emotional leverage is yeah. what they do. Mm -hmm. So she said, well, maybe we should think about it. I said, absolutely not. We're not doing it. I said, you call, insert the name of the legal people that's working on the contract and they're actually helping push the paperwork through. So that person said, no, absolutely not. You can't do that. And I think this came as a surprise to this person, right? That they actually called her or messaged her. She said, absolutely not. There's no legal stand. So then they said, well, the person that he owes money to may have a lien on the property. I said, how in the heck is that? We don't know of anything. And they assured us there was no lien. Well, his father, took a small loan with this business person in the town there where we live. And he's demanding his money. But it over to the, the farmer in 2011. So now the next step was that they had to pay the land bank of the Philippines so they could get the title of the land. In their name. In take, their name. And with, take, the, take the government of the Philippines off the title. So yeah. it'd be their property. So then they could sell it. So that, that's what happened to um, our land or the land that we purchased. It was under CLO title and paid in the bank, but we're not going through all the other details aside from that. But anyways, so, so do your due diligence, make sure that the title is clear of, and free of any liens that there's no first buyer, second buyer, third buyer, whatever it is. Here's what we learned. I'm going to tell you a little bit more. I'm not going to mention any names. Uh, and we're not mad at anybody. Okay. This is not a complaint about any, anybody in the transaction that went on. But again, it, we're not experts. We're just telling you our experience. Okay. And our experience is not unique in the Philippines. It's, it's just not. When you have a government owned property and then it's uh, gave out to individuals and then they get it. <clears throat> and there's certain things that have to be paid off. Like she said, when we looked at the land and we wanted it, we paid what we felt like was top dollar for it. And according to all the properties that we looked at, we paid a good and fair price, right? Mm -hmm. So we go to a lawyer's office and I want to do everything legal and you should. 
uh, but I didn't want any mishaps. So we all three sat down, me and Flora, and the the, the oldest uh, sibling that was left because the father had passed away. So this was the story that we were told. This is what we went in the lawyer's office. This is what we agreed to. Uh, the contract was drawn up that would be, we would pay half of the purchase price. And then when the title comes down in our name, pretty standard, then we'll pay the rest. That's the contract. So, you know, I had a concern in the U S you're going to put 20% down, right? And then it's going to be held in escrow and nobody can touch that money until all the title search is done. All the, all the, uh, check the title to make sure it's clear. We have in the U S we call that title insurance company and they can do the title research. Well, I was assured that everything's going to be okay. And I asked the seller, I'm going to put that in quotes. I'm going to ask the seller, I asked the seller, are you sure there's no back taxes? There's no liens. There's no anything on the title that is going to have to be taken care of. Oh no, 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 sir. There's not. And we were assured so many times, and even even the lawyer that was there said, look, you have nothing to worry about. And I was like, man, half, we put down half the money. I was like, that's too much. I just had a bad feeling. And, and I really was a little bit, I was very stern at, at this closing of, of the property because I felt like we were putting down too much. And I said, what guarantee do we have that they're just not gonna take this money? We don't have a title. We don't have anything. And, they, and the lawyer kept saying, you have a contract. You have a contract. That's your security. I'm like, oh, I don't feel good about this. So I expressed that. And of course, they're speaking in uh, the dialect here. And I, even if it was Tagalog, I wouldn't understand it perfectly. But there was a lot of talk going on, and, and, and I felt a little uneasy. But I thought, okay, we put down the half. If they want the other half, they're going to do the work, right? They're going to get the title clear. That's, I thought, okay, I don't want to do it, but if they want the other half, then they are motivated and that's our leverage. So I went ahead and did it. So I don't know, we, we did that in June and then it's like, we went back to the United States. I mean, two days after we signed the contract, we went back to the United States and paid the, we paid the money. I guess we rushed. <laughs> well, we were kind of in a rush. They wanted to sell it. We were afraid it was going to be gone when we come yeah. back. So we paid half. And and again, this is just our experience, but it's not an uncommon one here in the Philippines. So people ask me, should I buy property? I'm telling you what you could get into. I'm just being honest with you. I'm just telling you our experience. So about October, we're still in the U.S. And, and I come into the bedroom and my wife says, oh, so-and-so called. And that's the, the owner of the property. Oh, the seller. Uh, it was calling the seller because there's more details later. Mm -hmm. But the seller said, oh, uh, there is a lien on the property and, and after me to pay it, can you go ahead and pay me, you know, what, what was it, like a million pesos? Yeah, 1.4. <clears throat> 1. Can you go ahead and pay me that? And I'm like, and just lay it out there. I'm not, this is just what happened. She was like, and I think she'd talked to somebody else in the lawyer's office and yeah, it, it'd be okay. Cause your title is going to be okay. And I kind of, I said, no, no way. And I didn't say freaking way. <laughs> so but, you could edit that anyway. So, yeah. yeah. So anyway, I didn't want to do so it. So there's no way. Oh you, yeah. You didn't agree to that. Yeah. I didn't agree to that. I wanted to do the contract. That's what we say. We're going to do in the contract. So she, she didn't talk to anybody yet. So she said, well, maybe, and believe me, she's no pushover. You know, it's just sometimes people come to you with some pretty dang good stories and they have emergencies and they have reasons and they, they have emotional leverage is yeah. what they do. Mm -hmm. So she said, well, maybe we should think about it. I said, absolutely not. We're not doing it. I said, you call, insert the name of the legal people that's working on the contract and they're actually help and push the paperwork through. So that person said, no, absolutely not. You can't do that. And I think this came as a surprise to this person, right? That they actually called her or messaged her 
She said, absolutely not. There's no legal stand. So then they said, well, the person that he owes money to may have a lien on the property. I said, how in the heck is that? We don't know of anything. And they assured us there was no lien. Well, his father took a small loan with this business person in the town there where we live. And he's demanding his money because, you know, he's afraid the property is already sold and he's going to be left out in the cold or in the, in the heat of the Philippines. So, <laughs> so the story gets a little more crazy all the time. So then we talked to our real estate agent and she said, oh yeah, they don't have a, th this is a process of about what? That was October, November, December. We come back in November, probably by December, we knew partially part of this, part of the story. Well, come to find out, well, the, the real estate person and, and the legal person told us that they don't have a legal claim. I'm like, well, if they don't have a legal claim. Who has, who doesn't have the legal claim? The, the person that the seller owes the money to, and they said his father owed the money, but the, the oldest is, I said, well, he owed it to the, he owed it, the father owns it. He's dead. So you should have got your money while he's alive. That was my stand. <laughs> Plus they don't have a legal contract or anything on this. We don't owe him any money. We don't, we shouldn't pay the seller because there's no legal standing for this. And, and as it stood right then, we were right. So then we're at the property off and on. And I don't know if you ever notice any stress in my voice, you know, different times, but you know, we ended up building a fence around it. And it seemed like for a while we would be out there for a good while, a couple, two, three months. We'd, we'd go out to the property, we'd start doing some clearing, and somebody would show up. And they'd say, oh, this person, they really want to, you really, you really, and even some, some higher ups, you know, uh, authority figures in the area, you know, people that should know were encouraging us to go ahead and pay. And I'm going to say this, there was even veiled threats. Okay. And we didn't know to whether to take them serious or not, but this was all out in the, in the, in the environment and, and in our brain. And then we'd hear conflicting stories again. And this person was really mad that they weren't getting their money. And, and the way it was explained to me, they had a piece of paper that, that the father and this guy had agreed to, and they had the signature and that's it. And I thought, well, he should have got a better contract as far as I'm concerned. It's not my problem. It sounds like a lot of your problem and not my problem. So we weren't going to pay. And they're making it our problem. Every time we would come <laughs> out there, somebody would show up. And then the person that was helping us, the real estate lady, she would get upset because they, oh, they said this to me. And they were. I'm not saying it wasn't true. This is just stuff that happened. And I'm not blaming anybody, and I'm not mad at anybody. But it all came to a head. How did it even come to a head? How did we end up having a meeting? Well, because of this uh, stories back and forth, and we don't. Yeah, we would Especially hear me, I do not like any drama. Drama or any marites. <laughs> I don't know if you know that word. Anyway, it's gossip. Yeah, gossip. Like back and forth of words from the agent to the seller, and they were arguing and all that. And, and so, anyways, we wondered we, what the heck's going yeah, on. Yeah, what's going on? So, we ended up going to the barangay hall and got to find out that there was a first buyer. What they call a first buyer, which means. There's the story about the father owning, owing money to the businessman was not true. Because the story back then they told us during in October while we were back in the U.S. is that, oh, the seller's father <clears throat> owes this businessman 250,000 peso and the because of so many years that he never paid, 
So now the this business owner asking for 2.4 million or 2.5 million pesos in return of the 250,000 pesos. So we're like, man, this is got That's increased. a lot of interest on that, right? So anyway, so it's just for a loan. Yeah, just for a loan. So anyways, we found out um that this businessman was actually Hold the, on. Let's talk about the meeting. Well, yeah, that's uh that's so where This is I where we really it. found out. Yeah. Okay. So long story short, and we're 19 minutes in. We set up a meeting about enough gossip, enough running around. He said, she said. I mean, it was getting crazy. And we were not getting sleep. We we had a, We're a in, drama. The middle, in the middle of all of this. And, and a, little bit, a little bit of fear was involved. Yeah. And it's the Philippines. I don't know. You hear all kinds of crazy stuff. Yeah. So, you know, we requested a meeting. And they did, the, the lender did too. So... We oh, had you all, mean at the lawyer's office? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. we had it all set up. We get there first. The oldest uh, sibling gets there representing the, you know, the property. <laughs> and we're in the lawyer's office. And then the, the people, the lender showed up too. And him and his wife. And they were obviously suspicious kind of like us, I mean, they were really had been had an emotional toll put on them and we didn't really understand why they were that way. But so we all go to a conference room and it all starts to come out. And so we tell our side what's going on. We told about the threat and then the the lender he just kind of he kind of bowed his head. He said, yeah, I said a lot of things. And he said, I'm sorry. I really feel bad. I should have never said anything like that. And we could tell from his his countenance, the look on his face. And we're pretty good at reading people. that He, he really did. He, But he had this big frustration. And guess what comes out in this meeting? You know, I said, we have a contract on this property. If we had a lawyer draw it up. We put down half the money. And I'm not giving any more money until we get the title. And he just looks real surprised, and he looks at the the seller, the oldest son. And he's like, "What's this contract?" And I'm like, "Why are you so, you know, concerned?" Of course, it's a lot of loss in translation stuff going on. But come to find out, as she said, this couple that was putting so much pressure on the on the Seller. Old, old, oldest sibling, the seller, they actually had bought the property back in 2011-ish. Yeah. They paid off the land bank. It was their property. They dug a well on it, and they built a small little house out there. You saw the one that we tore down. Yeah. If you, if you, uh, you know, if you didn't, we're building on the same site that they had built this small house. And I'm like, what the heck? These people are the property owners. We're just now finding out mm -hmm. from June until what? January? Until December when we met. Uh, okay, yeah. December. I forgot when we met. So we find out in December that we're not even dealing with the real seller. We're not even dealing with the landowner. Wow. Crazy. So. Well, that's why he was there. Okay, yeah. I have to explain why the seller, we so called seller, is there. Okay, by the time of 2011, when the government turned over all this land to the farmers, right? And they have to pay the land bank to get the title. So that's what happened to this seller's father. Um, he sold the land to this couple, so-called the business owner, that so-called also like they he owes the money from, right? Am I saying it right? Yeah. Okay. So anyways, I know it's kind of confusing, right? So the true owner of the property is the businessman that they made the story that the father owes the money from them. They And everybody they, everybody involved. Yeah, they, they bought the land from the father who was still alive back then. 
But then because they took the loan from the bank, so they only slowly paying it, right? Until it's completely done and paid, paid off. And by the time it paid off, the father already passed away. So they haven't titled the land to their name. So the title is still on the seller's father's name. So when the time they wanted to title it, the seller was asking more money for the, uh, they call it SPA, which is special power of attorney, which is uh, the heirs, the heirs, the, the wife, and then the children needed to sign. Yeah, to get the title To transferred. get the title transferred. So they didn't get that done because they don't want to pay. They don't want to pay the 200,000 pesos that the uh, so-called seller is asking for. That's why all this mess, it's a messy... The title never got transferred. Yeah, never when got the guy bought the property... He paid it off from the land bank, and he never got the title in his name because sometime in all those years they tried to get ever they tried to get the title, uh, all the signatures to move the title after this after the sale had already been done. They'd already paid off the land bank, so it's, he was yes. on shaky legal ground. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, he unfortunately, was. Unfortunately, we didn't. Yeah. We didn't know that. We didn't know that they were actually business owners, that they actually purchased the property. They had re retirement dreams for that property, and business things kind of took over in their life, and, and they're trying to move on with the business, and they feel like that's more important, so they wanted to sell it so they could operate more in the business. So we had a big revelation. They were actually the buyer on the property, and the people that were selling it to us, really the only interest they had in the property is they hadn't signed the, the paper to turn it over to the other guy. Yeah. So you can imagine we really kind of felt for those two people, and we did. We felt for them, but I'm still, I still wasn't going to turn the money over. Well, the thing is, the question that we kind of, you know, like trying to figure, why did the true owner of the property let the seller do the deals? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's. If they're not going to sign the property, if they're holding you up for money, why did you let that person represent yeah. you as your seller? You already have the issue years ago of them asking you money, and, and then you and let them do the selling. You know what I'm saying? And there's a lot more history between that. Between, yeah. But it's, that's what happened. That's, you know, for whatever reason, they're really busy people. Well, so, but then again... Okay, I guess they needed the seller because so they could ask for the they could do the all the signature. Otherwise, the land will not be yeah. able to sell without their signature. Right, and that's true. Yeah, so that's why they needed it. So anyway, again, we're not we're not blaming anybody. Mm -hmm. We're not. We don't hate anybody. We have nothing but peace in our hearts about the whole thing. But would you say it's been a bumpy road? <laughs> a roller coaster ride. I mean. it's been a roller coaster ride, a bumpy road. Maybe we've been dragged down the road. Probably some other people too feel the same way in the in the transaction. But what I'm saying is it's not uncommon. Again, this is our experience. Is there a better way of doing it? I don't really know. I was assured by a lawyer that this is how it's done. And you think, well, they're a lawyer, they should know. But whatever. He but told it's, it's 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 working out. Yeah, it's working out. It's working out. Yeah. And you know, we have full use of the property. Mm -hmm. You can you know, I wouldn't be doing YouTube videos out there if we didn't. Mm -hmm. And it's coming I think it's coming to a conclusion probably I'll say in the next couple of months. We'll see. Yeah. That, that's, you know, that's it's the building. It's just a being. slow process. Yeah, it's a know. slow process. But we wanted to talk about some of that. And when, so when you asked me a question, well, how do you buy property in the Philippines? I, you know, as they used to say in high school, very carefully. <laughs> I can do it. <laughs> and with much fear and trepidation. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but my first experience was this house that we're sitting in. We didn't buy the house. We bought we bought an old 
broken down house that, you know, yeah. a few months later was involved in a flood. And then we had to, you know, totally demolish the house a couple of years later. And we rebuilt this house. But that transaction really, wouldn't you say, went pretty smooth? Not smooth. It takes a while, too. It takes time. It takes a, some time. Yeah. But there was no hidden. It was pretty no, straightforward. No, it's pretty straightforward. They said, here's the price. We paid the price. We had a lawyer. He was a little squirrely. But, you know, having said that, it went through without yeah. a whole lot of problem. Right. And, and it's in her name. And, I uh, think both of our names. Well, my name's yeah. on it, but yeah. legally I can't. You right. know, if for some reason she passed away, I couldn't sell the property. You ever think about that? Hmm. I need to re really think my legal contracts about it. <laughs> <laughs> I always say you my... You still live here, though. Nobody will no, chase unless, you. Unless they kick me out, you know. No one will chase you out. I don't think they're going to I don't think they're gonna kick out a, a rich foreigner. <laughs> long, as long as I'm a good guy. Yeah. But, uh, but I've always had a saying about buying, you know, if you're married to a Filipina... And it sounds, it's a harsh statement, but I would say it's words to live by. Don't, if you're married to a Filipina or your girlfriend and, they, you know, we want to buy a property, we want to build a house, whatever it is, we want to buy land. Never spend any more money than you're willing to walk away from with a clear conscience and no regrets. Yeah. So don't buy it unless you're willing to walk away from it. So everything we've done. That's, I mean, I'm, I'll be 63 this year. You know, we I've got property here. Who knows what the next 20 years, you know, if I lived to 82, 83, yeah. or 85, or 90, who knows what could happen. Legally, I'm not in a real good position. Now I can turn around and I could, I could lease this property to myself, well, from her for 100 pesos or whatever for the next 20 years, and then I could have it legal residency but let's don't get off on that because i'm not a i'm not a filipino well legal probably scholar. that's another thing that we could discuss also like the srrb and the yeah. 13a b so we're that's a could whole actually, other video yeah, yeah that's a whole another video for that uh so he could stay here long you know yeah but in conclusion i would just say this is a disclaimer, a disclaimer. We're not giving you advice on how to buy property. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. This is just our, You're purely on your our own. experience. You're on your own. <laughs> this is uh, this is purely our experience. Do your due diligence. Mm -hmm. You may have very possibly a lot better way to do it, but it's been, especially this, this Chloe title. And when a lot of people own, you know, are signatures on signatories on the, on the property, it can get sticky and the same kind of thing happens in the u.s sometimes you know but there's just not as many safeguards for the buyer here and my uh i went to real estate school back when i was probably 24 years old and the teacher in the class in springfield missouri he said always remember this as an agent it's not talking about this situation but he said sellers are liars and buyers are worse. <laughs> he was pretty cynical about the whole real estate process. But when you get into it, you're going to find out things that you didn't know. And, you know, just be careful and do your own due diligence, we've said a few times. But, again, finally, we're not mad at anybody. I mean, you can tell we're in pretty good mood. I mean, yeah. we're building on the property. It we're, is what it is sometimes. Yeah. Like, but then, you know, sometimes you wish people would just be honest, you know. Like, but of course, that's sometimes you can. Yeah. So we're not upset with anybody at all. I mean, we love people, but, you, you know, protect your own interests. Yeah. And when troubles come up in the Philippines, keep a, keep a good face. You know, don't get angry. Don't get vindictive and march forward and marshal your best you know, defenses and legal advice that you can get. And hopefully you can have your dream of having some island property in the Philippines one of these days. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of people investing here. Oh, it, I mean, it's, it's just our story anyway that we are sharing. I mean, I think it's different when it is residential lot 
or those um, condos. Yeah, those condos. Those are totally different. This is just because it is a, a CLOA title. That's why it takes and, a while to process we, it. We recently talked to some expats over there. <clears throat> They've had that property in uh, Nueva Valencia for how many? Ten years. They still don't have a clear title on it. So. Which one is that? The. Oh, the, the oh, they have it. Well, he processed it for four years. Four years? Yeah, he four processed years. four years before yeah. they got the title. At the closing, they told us, oh, I take between three and six months tops. Well, what is it now? Seven, seven. seven almost eight yeah, months. Eight so, months. Anyway, I really appreciate my other half coming on the channel. Uh, Flora, Miss Flora, she's, uh, as, they call, as, as they call her here, Madame. 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 Uh, I appreciate her being here and her perspective. She doesn't come on the channel a lot. But if you go to our Facebook page, The Philippines Project, I put most of her reels about the property. Facebook reels up on Facebook. Yeah, I am more like the short video type instead of this like long conversation type. I was like, I don't know. Maybe I could do this more. She could do it, but, you know. She just has been putting it off. So <laughs> I've been doing it for almost almost two, two years. Two years, yeah. And I look back at some of my older videos and wow, I can't they're getting more views than the videos I'm doing now. And they're not near as good. So whatever. It's a it's a roller coaster ride too, being a YouTube channel, so or having a YouTube well, channel. Well and also I think we have to look at it like this is our journey of retirement so that's what we we are trying to share even on my facebook page uh personal page anyway uh, that's what i'm trying to share is just our journey of retirement here in the philippines i know it is um as he said a uh, roller coaster ride but so far it's you know no risk no reward yeah Damn, so. we like it yeah I mean, not the roller coaster ride, but the you know, overall, overall, it's 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 good. You know, I'm yeah. here with my family, and you know, you know what I've noticed about <clears throat> I watch a lot. I watch from time to time. I watch other expats in the Philippines and their videos, and why do they get a lot of views? And and sometimes there are certain ones, and most of them, for the most part, are just pretty good. They're just trying to educate you, but I have seen some. They inject this drama into every video, and it's it's clickbait. That's their method of doing their their YouTube. It works, but we're not those kind of people. I'm not that kind of person. I'm always going to try to put a positive spin, yeah, positive, whatever. Yeah. And so we're 36 minutes in. I'm going to get off here. Go and uh, subscribe, please. Subscribe. <laughs> I just put a membership. If you look down below the video, there's a little button, a black button that says join. It gives you an option if you want to join and support the channel. It's small amounts, like I think the first level, 49 pesos, which is less, less than, than a dollar. dollar a month. And then I think it goes to maybe a hundred or you can, if you want to, if you're interested in that, hit the button. It'll give you all the options. And also ask some questions on the, uh, In the comment, comment section. section. Yeah. And we'll try to answer them, and we we'll probably do it this often, at least once a week for me. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see about that. Or every two weeks, maybe. Oh, you can do it often as you want. Yeah, but anyway. getting her to do it. That, yeah. that's the thing. So anyway, I, I really am glad that she she came on today, and it, yeah, yeah, I'm camera shy, so yeah. My biggest video is is entitled "Our Our Twenty Year Marriage." My twenty year marriage to a Filipina, and at the bottom it says, "Big mistake." Yeah, it's got over a hundred thousand views, and and uh, you're still you, regretting it. I, I, that was that <laughs> that was my clickbait. Big mistake. So oh, I got to find out if the guy screwed up, you know. And in the picture that the, the thumbnail, if you look at it, it's us eating a bowl of noodles in Singapore. So yeah. Hey. <laughs> Life is good, right? Life is good. Yeah, life is good. All right. I'll see you Thank next you time. Thank you guys for Thank watching. You. See you next time.